Okay, I would like to nominate my favorite Spider-Man villain as Spellcheck. Yeah. And can we He's- all agree that the first draft of this character was known as Grammar Nazi? Like, maybe... <laughs> There's no Actually, way he wasn't, right? Tom, There's no way he wasn't. Tom, excuse me. I hate to correct you, but the first draft of this character was the paperclip from Microsoft Word that yells at you. Oh, Clippy. Oh, Clippy. <laughs> Clippy was the first draft of Spellcheck. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Nina, who is your pick for dumbest Spider-Man villain of all time? Thanks, Brian. Um, so I did some <laughs> a little research today. <laughs> Tom's not... Not doing well, I don't think. <laughs> doing great. I'm doing terrific. All right. Um, and I'm sure that you two will chime in because I'm talking to two bona fide comic experts. But I found a really dumb villain on our list at looper.com. And my, I found a favorite fact about him. But the gist is his name is Typeface. Um, right. And he first appeared in Peter Parker Spider-Man volume, volume two, number 23 in 2000. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. actually, a I have A comic two- book I bought off the rack. Nice. I remember buying um, it. Actually, Whoa. I lied. I have two facts that I love about typeface, but then I'm curious okay. like, about more stuff about typeface. So basically, he puts letters on his face, and he also uses letters to kill people. Am I correct in this? Yeah. Well, he uses letters yeah. to beat people up. Right. But He's he puts got, an like, R or yeah. um, an A on his face, and the R is for right. retribution, and the A is for annihilation. And I'm like, those are the only words. Yeah. Um, right. But I found two really great facts about him that I'm obsessed with. Can I pause right here before before you tell us the fact? Yeah. Wouldn't it have been a cooler villain if he just put an R on his forehead and called himself Retribution and got rid of yeah. all the rest of the stuff? Yeah, none of the rest of the stuff is necessary. <laughs> like it's just like letters just for he just he used, used to, regular yeah. knives or right, I don't want right. to say why, because mm-hmm. you might be about to tell us that right well, now. Well, he Go feels ahead, like well, he feels like that villain in the first Austin Powers movie who throws a shoe. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. who throws yeah, a the shoe? Task. Thank you, random task. Okay, so the first fact that I loved is, you know, after uh, he's after they try to explode him and he doesn't die, um, he he becomes a vigilante and he inspires another vigilante who names himself Spellcheck. Yeah, I checked that what? one out today. That yeah. sucks. That's yeah. the worst thing I've ever heard. I hate it I'm so sorry. much. Somebody buried the lead pretty hard on this. Let's talk Spellcheck. What's Spellcheck's deal? <laughs> I'm sharing the picture in our chat right now. Oh, what? boy. The, no way. <laughs> this it's guy rocks. Good. Whoa, wait. With great power, <laughs> there must also come great vocabulary. That go. is money right there. Oh, man. Holy Every sp- editor in the work. world just screamed. So Spellcheck, Spellcheck shows up in one issue of Tangled Web of Spider-Man, which is sort of That the, makes sense. There that's it is. Dope. So Tom, Tom knows this as the comic book. That's about Spider-Man's like tertiary. It's like, here, hey, Spider-Man's cool. What about stuff that happens around Spider-Man when he's not there? So that's kind of what's great. going it, on here. It was almost, it was like a, it was so like basically Black they were like, do you Spider-Man love Spider-Man? The, they were like, do you love yeah. Spider-Man, but you want less Spider-Man? That's one hundred percent what it was. It was like it was this bizarre like creative writing class sort of playground for writers where they got to do like they did like a flowers for Algernon story where uh, where the rhino got really smart for two issues and then realized that it's a lot easier to be a dumb villain. Sure. So in this in this comic book that I checked out before our chat, because I saw that fact, too, I was because I remembered typeface from a million years ago when I got the comic and then I saw, oh, and he inspired a vigilante named Spellcheck. I was like, shut up. And so I looked at it and it's just this one issue with a very stylized art style. So that's why this in this picture, he looks like a zombie. Right. Um, he's meant to just be a normal man. Um, but his whole deal his the only way that he's a vigilante is that he's just like out to get people who use bad grammar. OK, I would like to nominate my favorite Spider-Man villain as Spellcheck. Yeah. And can we he's- all agree that the first draft of this character was known as Grammar Nazi? Like. <laughs> Maybe there's no Actually, way he wasn't, right? Tom, there's no way he wasn't. Tom, excuse me. I hate to correct you, but the first draft of this character was the paper clip from Microsoft Word that yells at you. Oh, Clippy. Oh, Clippy. <laughs> Clippy was the first draft of spell check. Oh yeah. my gosh. I'd mm-hmm. like to see a team up with Clippy <laughs> and spell Oh check. man. It looks um, yeah, like but you know what? For all, of, for all of Spellcheck's I faults, that. I bet he, you know, murdered people when they m- m- screwed up Sneak Peek P E E K versus Sneak Peek mm. P E A K, which is 
a thing people do. <laughs> Basically, all he did in this in this one issue that he appeared in is that he chased Typeface down. He's mm-hmm. like, oh, I can help you. And then Typeface is like, you're too weird for me. This is a man who's covered in letters and beating people up with letters. And he's like, get it. out of here, you freak. You freak, yeah. And, and then at the end, he beats up spell check and hangs him from a light post like Spider-Man and leaves a note saying, from your friendly neighborhood typeface. And wow. Spider-Man finds it and he's like, well, that's weird. Wait, and he just uses the, the same catchphrase and just puts his name into it? He doesn't even well, I mean, come up with joke. anything more interesting? That's the joke that they were doing. Uh, it's fine. It. It's, one of those, it's one of those strange things. But yeah, so typeface, I was reading that comic book that typeface first shows up in and I was just, I think that was the the comic, the issue that made me like, not interested in that comic book anymore because I was just like, am I supposed to take this guy seriously? Because he seems like he's being depicted as very deadly and as a formidable foe for Spider-Man. Like he beats up and knocks out Spider-Man like in their first encounter. But like he's just some clown who's covered himself in letters and has knives that look like letters. And I think, Mm -hmm. I don't know. He just sucks. He used So the reason that he's typeface is because he used to be a a sign painter. Right. Mm -hmm. That's his big origin story. He, he had a sign. Pa- so he came back from Vietnam and I guess his wife left him and his brother died and he started a sign painting business and then someone bought his sign painting business and I guess fired him and he got really mad about it. And now he's a villain. He paints himself. And he needed some of that art for retribution. I'll tell you what uh, surprises me the most about the story, Brian, is that you own the first appearance of typeface and you've chosen to just keep working for a living when you could have oh, sold that and been a past tense oh no i'm sure i sold that many years ago for a nickel that's gone that's gone i used, I used to work at that i used to work at that comic shop and every so often i would i would haul in my old comics and be like i don't need these anymore i'm in college and they'd give me some comic book credit and on i would go and that 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 issue has been gone for literal decades now. So, Brian, can I ask you a a question about something else I found about typeface? You can try. I won't promise I'll know an answer, but give me a shot. A fact that I found, fact, I don't know if it's true because it's, I saw it on Wikipedia and I tried to trace it to the source and it's gone. But apparently Paul Jenkins, who is one of the writers of, of the, of this comic said that if and when typeface dies, the only guarantee we have is he, his eyes will turn into little X's. <gasps> That's cute. And I was just like, it's appalling that you have to tell us that. <laughs> like, I mean, it's cute that he said like, that. Like, was anyone laying awake at night being like, but will his eyes turn into X's? Like, I, I, I'm I sure have. they asked him that. There. I'm sure that was that probably came up in the same way where it's like, hey, we got to interview Paul Jenkins, the creator of the century, the writer of the influential Inhumans comic. And they're like, so let me ask you about this villain you made, Typeface. And he's like, oh, man. I mean, I, right. had, to, I had to write something that day. His publicist is like, no more Typeface questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's the same thing where like when they ask the, the people who wrote the best episode of Star Trek ever, Threshold, whenever they talk to them about that episode, the one where Tom Paris turned into a lizard and abducted Captain Janeway and turned her, her into a lizard, and then they both had lizard babies. Um, I'm sure it's the same kind of thing where it's like, You've had a great career working in Star Trek. Let me ask you about this one horribly embarrassing thing. You have to own it. So sure. Paul George Jenkins Clooney always gets own. asked about Batman and Robin. Always. I mean, yeah, He's no, still talking about it. Yeah. yeah. George Clooney has had such a great career. And if yeah. anyone gives him guff over Batman, they're just like, like you're missing the point, man. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I combined 36 yeah. oceans. I mean, the guy <laughs> has done good work. So no, but he's oceans. like the last old Hollywood figure we have. And everybody's like, so what about the nipples on the Batman suit? Like still, they're still <laughs> asking him about it. There are a lot of villains on this list here that I like over on looper.com. We've got the Spider Queen, who was actually in a storyline I really like, which was Spider Island, where all the ca- all the residents of New York get turned into spiders, spider people. And she's like the mastermind controlling everyone. I was I was tempted by Spider Queen because our article says she can kill by screaming. And I was like, that's funny. She has a screamy kill. There's also yeah. a lot of characters on here I just don't know. Like, I, I've read a lot of Spider-Man. And I, I've never heard of Banjo. Oh, Banjo? Come on. I've never heard of Banjo. One appearance, one issue of one comic back in the 80s. I don't know Manslaughter Marsdale. I don't know Sticks and Stone. But I do know... 
I'll mention, you know what? I won't mention some of the ones I do know because Tom, you picked from this list too, didn't you? I, I did. I did grab one from this list. Why don't, why don't we, why don't we flip to you for now? Let's, let's, uh, who, who did you pick from this list? So I don't like start talking about someone that you picked. Oh, I, I feel like I promise that you won't. Cause there's basically nothing to say, but I wish it had been banjo banjos. I mean, gracious. I just think whenever I hear banjo, I think about space ghost lamenting his dead aunt. <laughs> You know that one? The one that he just banjo. follows around for the whole episode. Banjo! Tom, t- tell us who you picked. Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us something. Stop me from talking, please. Okay, so I, I I went back to this one because it's not because this is a fascinating character, but it is because it, it's sort of representative of a lot of the stuff that drives me crazy about comics. Uh, I was a kid in, in, the, in the 90s, and I remember... You know, not really getting to buy a lot of comics, but definitely seeing them on the shelf. And you would see a character and it would catch your eye, catch your attention. And you'd be like, man, I wonder what his deal is. And then you'd have to wait until you were an adult to actually find out what the hell was going on with this dude. And generally speaking, by the time you that there was like a, a Wikipedia page dedicated to some trash can character, it, it was 20 years later and you it, you would look it up and you'd, get, you'd feel that rush of excitement that you got when you were a kid. And then realized that this was just trash, that this was just like tail end of the 80s, a little bit too much cocaine still in the systems of these <laughs> writers. And like there was not a lot of great stuff. So uh, 1992, it's it's the golden age of sort of Todd McFarlane, uh, let's toss too many teeth on something and make it scary uh, aesthetic. So like Venom had come out uh, four years earlier, earlier the same year, Carnage had showed up. Uh, and then- Marvel introduces this new character called the Doppelganger, mm. who's uh, uh, very much in the same vein as, as Venom and Carnage in that it's it's just a scarier looking version of Spider-Man, uh, only with the, the added detail that there's basically nothing to him. He's, just, he's, uh, he's Spider-Man, but with six arms. So you get the whole oh, like eight limbs thing. I was just about like to ask how similar he was to Tobey Maguire's goth Spider-Man in Spider-Man Three. Very different. <laughs> that would have <laughs> similar dancing, but that's where the similarity. Oh, uh, okay. If we cool. can get anybody to animate, like <laughs> <laughs> you just nominated Maguire, yourself, Tom. <laughs> yeah, but with if we can get you to animate many- whatever you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's it's Spider-Man. It's like the Spider-Man costume and everything. But on a on an eight limbed creature with uh with with scary scratchy fingies and uh, <laughs> and great big and great great big bitey teeth. He's yeah. got the fangities. Mm. If you want to try and go into the backstory, it's exhausting. It's not fun. He's a spider clone, right? Nope. No. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you would think then so. I don't because know anything about like, him. No, this was the right time for that sort of stuff. Uh, no, this was. It doesn't matter. A uh, character called the Magus, who's like a, a, a different version of Adam Warlock, like an evil right. Adam Warlock, uses the technology of another character named Anthropomorpho. God, I hate the 90s. And uh, and <laughs> uses it to make evil versions of all of these Marvel characters. And that's it. You just you wind up with just panels and panels of like Captain America, but he's got scary sharp teeth and red eyes and a buzzsaw instead of a shield. And Alpha Flight, <laughs> except they've all got red eyes and scary sharp teeth. Like it, more or less, almost all of them were just people the way that you were used to seeing them, but with red eyes and scary right. sharp cool. teeth. And Spider-Man right. got one of them, and uh, he died immediately. Didn't have a personality. Didn't have. He was just like a scarier Spider-Man. World. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> too pure. And then yeah. too we didn't beautiful deserve and too him. pure to stay dead <laughs> because they brought him back. And- some total, he's done nothing the last close to 30 years that he's been around. He's done practically nothing. He shows up remember, every once in a while and he's scary. I remember a friend of mine had the action figure. So obviously he mm-hmm. stuck out in my mind. But aside from that, yeah, he's just like, he's cool. I'll say this. He looks cool in that 90s sort of way if you are, you know, 13 and reading comic books. Totally. Yeah. You're like, oh, Visually. Yeah, cool. But, the, yeah, but no, then you he, think about it for five seconds and you're like, no. Yeah. Not so good. And could right. you come he, up with like, a better name than Doppelganger for a spider theme, an evil spider? Right. You know? Right. And you aren't know, there you don't like want a lot of poisonous spiders out there yeah. in the world? Yeah. 
A lot of yeah. them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you don't want to go too deep Australia. into it, but yeah. like at the same time, the fact that he he just keeps showing up and that he's basically an animal. He's like the, he's this nasty like he, he, he's barely sentient if at all. That means that like somebody somebody is special ordering costumes for him because he's always in the Spider Man <laughs> yeah, outfit. Wearing a Spider Man, a six yeah. armed Spider Man outfit. A with six a armed Spider Man outfit, which is yeah. Some no, like, Amazon I don't know delivery person is at. like, why am I yeah. all delivering all of these <laughs> Spider Man costumes? Someone We've got stitching a pretty into good one. Idea where doppelgangers yeah. going to show yeah. up again? <laughs> yeah, and he's got Prime shipping. <laughs> <laughs> That's my pick. I yeah That's a no good really pick. although. It, he could have been stood in for by like any of the '90s, like too right. scary, too many fangs characters. There's a lot. We're up of to them. like '90 symbiotes now. Like it's it's so, exhausting. Brian, but which one did you pick, man? Well, speaking of the '90s, I just want to run through a few more of the ones on this list here. We've got the Jackal on our list. Who mm. I understand why he's here. He probably didn't start out quite so bad, but he just became like this pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, I've cloned you, Spider Man, and he's like, Oh, I got to deal with this clone, and then he's like, Guess what? I cloned the clone, Spider Man. I did it again, and then, right? And then he's like, I cloned myself, Spider Man. Uh, would you like to see my favorite thing that uh, that the Jackal ever created? My favorite creation of his. Yes, please. Uh, do you remember Fleer uh, trading cards from back in the day? Sure. Now, see that guy uh, right there. His name's Shockleganger. It's not. It's Shockle Shock. <laughs> Shockleganger is my. I mean, I prefer. I, oh, I wish that they called oh, him that. Oh man! No, it's Doppelshock. It, it is Doppelshock. Shockleganger is funnier. <laughs> They're both good. Thank you. <laughs> They're both good. For the trading cards, they made a uh, they made a jackal clone thing that he had created that was a combination of the doppelganger and the shocker, <laughs> which. Gives me the opportunity to say Doppelshocker at work, and that's uh, that's my contribution to, to today's Beautiful. conversation. And he's like all about cloning, which is not really something that like jackals have a lot to do with. So he's off. I was just going to ask for starters. He's a scientist never, who's like, I'm a jackal. I've never heard what? his storyline put in such yeah. succinct terms. And that is the funniest. I, that, I love true. that. Now, all of a sudden, I love this character. I did it and again, one, Spider-Man. Yeah. And one of and the clones. speaking of again, here's another me. I love this. Yeah. This is great. One of, one, of, one of his clones is also on our list, and his name is Spider-Side, because he kills mm-hmm. all the spider clones. So mm-hmm. he sucks. Oh, like oh, like Homicide. Yeah. I thought yeah. S-I-D-E. Yeah. 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 Totally oh, get where yeah. you're coming from. But my pick is actually none of these items on the list. I picked one. I went off off menu for this one. Um, it's a character that's been brought up by a podcast duo that I really like, the, the Mr. Sunday movies, uh, Weekly Planet guys, James and Mason. They mention this Spider-Man bad guy a lot, and I like him for the reason that he is very dumb. And if you look up any... Where ours is the only list that doesn't have seem to list this guy, which we should probably rectify immediately. Uh, it's a villain named Big Wheel. Big Tom, Wheel. are you familiar with Big Wheel? I know Big Wheel. Big Wheel and the Rocket Racer. They go hand in hand, baby. That's right. So, so the story of Big Wheel is that there's this guy, Jackson Wheel, W E E L E. I forget that that's his name. That's his name. His name is Wheel, Jackson Wheel, and he hires this this villain, Rocket Racer who has a super-powered jet skateboard, and he rides around New York City doing crimes. He hires him to get these incriminating documents. <laughs> Does he do any he's nice like, so miserable. Jack- Jackson Wheel is a businessman. and he, No, he's I'm like, just so irritated that his name is Wheel. I, hate I mean, that. Yeah, that's what they do. Like, um, well, but wait, no, it actually ties into a story, so hang on. Peter I guess- Spider. Yeah. It gets better. No, 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 no. Wait. It gets better. So he hires Rocket Racer to hire to to get these documents, and he does. And then he's like, "Wait, you don't have the most incriminating document here." And Rocket Racer's like, "I know. I'm gonna blackmail you now. Gotcha." And so Jackson Wheel is like, "Ooh, you got me." So I'm so he, mad I could build a big wheel. Well, so what happens is when 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 Rocket Racer is taunting Jackson Wheel, he's like, "I got you now." You big wheel, like big wheel. He's like, cause he's like a big businessman. He calls him big wheel. And he, and then he, and then, so then Jackson wheel goes to the tinkerer who is the super villain invention guy. Mm-hmm. He says, 
I gotta get this rocket racer. I'm so mad when he's always calling me Big Wheel. <laughs> and the tinkerer goes, that gives me an idea. And I so- I pay $100 so dollars an hour to watch Brian act out plots of comics. <laughs> and so he gives him a giant wheel made of steel. Ooh. Oh, is it like a Ferris wheel or yeah, like it's a like, bike so, wheel? So I shared it in the chat. Um, okay. So if you look at our chat, there's the cover of his first appearance. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> now, Nina, you're not familiar with the character, so let me help you out here. What you want to look for here is the great big wheel. You see that? <laughs> oh, you know, I didn't see it at first, and so now now I do. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> and so And so he shows up. So Spider-Man and Rocket Racer are fighting. And all of a sudden, this goon shows up in a giant wheel and he starts mm -hmm. chasing Rocket Razor. And Spider Man's one. like, I don't know what's going on. And so eventually, <laughs> Spider Man gets, he starts fighting Rocket Racer again on a rooftop. And Big Wheel goes up the building to get after Rocket Racer. And then they like move out of the way and Big Wheel mm -hmm. falls into the Hudson River. <laughs> <laughs> so there he is. He's shown up a few more times since then, but he's always basically a dope. Um, that's, you know, I'm so I think sorry. He's, yeah, so that's <laughs> no, my pick. No, I'm for, not sorry because now I know the big wheel exists. Big wheel. Yeah. Big and you know wheel. what? It justifies that's my fear of Ferris wheels, which was originally due to heights and is now due to crime. <laughs> yeah, imagine <laughs> pivoted. if a Ferris wheel tried to commit a crime. I've pivoted in my, in my phobia. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Bye.